imagine you are the manager of a very big hotel. It is so huge such that it has an infinite number of rooms. All of the rooms are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Every room in this hotel has a next room, but there is no last room. There is always a next room, no matter which room you choose. It is now crowded with people because it is the holiday season. It is completely booked, with one person occupying every single room. Then a person shows up and asks for a room. He acknowledged that it is the holiday season and that it is difficult to find him a room. But then you tell him he can have a room. He is now confused. How? Isn't the hotel fully booked? How can we create a new room? You now make a public announcement to all hotel residents. You instruct them to relocate to the room adjacent to their original room. So the person in room 1 moves to room 2, the person in room 2 moves to room 3, the person in room 100 moves to 101. Since there is always a next room and the list of rooms never ends, every occupant can settle to a new room, and then guess what? Room 1 is free for this man now. A tour group of 20 tourists heard the news and started to come to your hotel. This is simple, just move the existing occupants 20 rooms down the row and you can fit all 20 tourists in. Except this time, you want to move 21 rooms because you are tired of moving people around and want to occupy a room to have some rest. However, the trouble never ends. Your idea has spread throughout the community, and now there are an infinite number of tourists coming to visit your hotel. Your doorbell rang in the middle of the night, and now you have to accommodate an infinite number of tourists. This is a little complicated, so you asked your supervisor how it could be done. Your supervisor is a math genius, and she develops a strategy. She instructs you to relocate all current occupants to a room with twice the current room number. So you would move from room 1 to room 2. Room 2 would be relocated to room 4. Room 8 would be relocated to room 16. By doing so, you have spared all of the odd-numbered rooms. Because there are an infinite number of odd numbers, you can now accommodate an infinite number of new arriving tourists in odd number rooms. After all the relocation, finally the day is over. On the next day, every room is still occupied. You are shocked just as you are about to begin your night shift. There are infinitely many tours of infinitely many tourists waiting to check in. But how? You take a seat and try to figure out what to do. Your supervisor reminds you that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. So you think of something. We will move the existing customers to powers of 2. So room 1 would move to room 2, room 2 would move to room 4, room 3 would move to room 8, and so on. Then, for each passenger on tour 1, you assign them to a power of 3. The first passenger on tour 1 is assigned room 3, the second passenger is assigned room 9, and the third passenger is assigned room 27. The powers of 5, the next prime number, would then be occupied by tour 2. Tours 3 would be assigned powers of 7, and so on. You get the idea. Because there is an infinite number of prime numbers, we can fit an infinite number of tours. Moreover, since the powers of prime numbers do not overlap, so we are guaranteed that every tourist gets a single room. It appears to be going well. Even though some rooms will be vacant, it appears that we will be able to accommodate an increasing number of guests at the hotel. Until one day, an infinite number of tourists arrived. Instead of registering tourists by numbers as in the past, this tour registers tourists by their names. Every tourist has a name that is an infinite string of characters long. So we have a tourist named Mary 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 that keeps repeating infinitely. Then we have a Peter Peter Peter, and someone with the string D E D E D E D E D E. We simply call them Mary, Peter, and Dedede. 
you now sit down and attempt to prepare a list for the tourists. Then you're stuck once more. It appears that there is no way to write it down as a list. Every time you make a list, it appears that you are leaving out a large number of tourists. Assume you have a list of tourists. There is always one tourist who is not on the list. We can accomplish this by swapping out one of the characters in each line. We take the first letter of the first person and change it to N. Then take the second letter from the second person and change it to F. Take the third letter from the third person and change it to F. By repeating this process indefinitely, we have a tourist whose name differs from the tourists on the list by at least one character. There is no way to make a complete list. Indeed, you can always generate an infinite list of tourists who are not already on your infinite list of tourists. You inform your supervisor that you must decline this tour because it is impossible to create a list of tourists. So, what exactly is going on here? The previously accommodated infinite tour is in fact countably infinite. This means that, like natural numbers, we can find a way to align them. The method is not unique. As you have seen above, for the tour of 20 tourists, instead of shifting 20 rooms, you can shift 21 rooms, 30 rooms, or even more. Even with an infinite number of tours for an infinite number of tourists. The use of prime numbers is not the only method. Let's say the residents that are staying at the hotel is tour 0. We can put it in the first row. The resident of the first room would be named Tour 0 Tourist 1. Then the second row comes Tour 1. We have Tour 1 Tourist 1, Tour 1 Tourist 2, etc. In this way, every tourist and resident have a unique name consists of two numbers, Tour and Tourist Number. We then first accommodate tourists with the tour and tourist number sum to 1, then sum to 2, then sum to 3. By doing this, we see that we are aligning them diagonally. We then distribute the rooms according to the order on this string. So that we have an alternate way to accommodate this infinitely many tours of infinitely many tourists. In comparison, for the tour with an infinite number of tourists named by characters. We cannot make a list of them whatsoever. This tour is said to be incountably infinite. We are unable to match all of the tourists with a natural number. Someone is always undercounted. This is unbelievable. A hotel with an infinite number of rooms can always have room for newcomers, whereas does not have room for newcomers. It just appears that some infinities are greater than others. This is a perfect representation of natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and real numbers. A countably infinite number of numbers can always be fit into a countably infinite set of numbers. Natural numbers, integers, and rational numbers all have the same amount. This quantity is known as cardinality. We have a fancy shorthand for the cardinality of natural numbers. Aleph zero. We have natural number, integer, and rational number sets that have cardinality equal to Aleph zero. Real numbers, on the other hand, are uncountably infinite. The cardinality of real numbers is usually referred as 2 to the power Aleph 0. However, the derivation and idea behind this involve many advanced concepts. That's a story for another time.